Hi everybody, it is time for me to set up my, like refresh my quarterly stuff for work. I already did one of these for my personal life, which I will link in the description below. But as I separated my work and my personal planning this year, doing a quarterly refresh for work does not they don't, they don't overlap. They do their own things. Now I use the HB90 system, which is a quarterly goal setting system for your work life. I'll link my review of that in the description as well. I did a very detailed review of both the planner system, the system itself, and the boot camp that you can do. But I am going to make a change this month. If you watch my planner stack video, and holy shit, I'm going to have to leave you such a reference of all the things for this particular uh, video. But my planner stack for 2022, this is my half letter sized planner that I was using both with the HB90 stuff as well as some stuff from the Maker's Yearbook. And this was going to be my work goal setting planner along with my Kanban board, which we will talk about in a hot minute here. The problem I'm running into is that I don't go into this very often. Now that's okay. I don't need to go into it very often, but I was finding it the easiest thing to neglect when it comes to my entire planner system. Everything else, my daily planner, my personal planner, even my bullet journal are getting the use I wanted out of them, but this one just keeps getting neglected. And so even during like the review every week when I kind of review how work went, I'm not going to the prompts that are in this book. I'm just kind of thinking it over in my head and then going to my Kanban board and making decisions for the week. So that's one area of tension that has been a bit of a struggle with this planner is not really utilizing it the way that I want to be. The second area of struggle that I'm getting into is that I'm really missing having a weekly overview for the week for work. Now I use a project management software. I also have my Kanban board and I've got stuff on my Google calendar, but having a written plan for the week is something that I really miss doing. And I could do it in my bullet journal, but I'm keeping my bullet journal personal only. And I'm trying to maintain that boundary. And the only work stuff I put in my weekly Moxie life is my like phone calls, like things that impact my daily schedule. So I could print out the HB90 weekly stuff, but it's a really big layout. It's a two page, week on two pages layout. I don't need that much room. I just need a sort of a basic overview of the week, which reminded me as to why I was so interested in using the Moxie Life daily. At the, the Moxie Life daily, when they came out with it, was the thing that really like got me interested in the idea of separating work and personal in the first place. But I didn't want to use it because it had all the goal setting stuff that I wasn't going to use. And it just felt like a whole bunch of stuff in a, pl a quarterly planner that I wasn't going to use just for the weekly and the daily pages. It felt like a waste. Well, I'm changing my mind. <laughs> And we're going to go with the Moxie Life daily for the next quarter. This is a qu one quarter's worth of planner here. And so I'm going to use this for the quarter and then we will see how I do at the end. Now, how am I going to utilize this? Well, I'm not going to be doing the Moxie Life goal setting system in this planner because, and notice like the pen test and everything. This is the one I used like this is the one I had from when they sent me all the planners for review at the um, last year. And I was like, I'm going to hang on to it in case I use it. I'm not going to do the compass assessment. I'm not going to do any of this stuff. I'm probably just going to tear these pages out. As a matter of fact, I may just tear these pages out because I don't need any of them. Do I want to tear them out? Do I want to? Yeah, fuck it. Tearing those pages out. Here we go. You guys are like, oh, geez, Cindy. I'm tearing these ones out because I don't need them. Oh, my God. Oh, this was a mistake. <laughs> oh, Cindy. Why do you not think before you tear? Anyway, so what I am going, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to write in, uh, okay, let, let's back this up. Let's back this up. Okay. I already did my goal setting and brainstorming. I just printed out those pages because I have the year long goal setting HB90 planner. I printed those out. I did that already. That's all done. My quarterly review is done. My goal setting is done for the quarter. And then I just have to set my Kanban board up and set this planner up. And so that's what we're doing today. For this annual goals section, I am going to put my quarterly goals. What I will do is each month, I will set my focuses for the month and I will just use washi tape to cover up all of the categories and just use these pages for like major projects and stuff like that. 
Same with my weekly actions. I'll just cover these up and what I'll do, what I'm thinking about doing, and I guess I can set this up for next week, is cover each of these up and to create four categories. So one for each of my goals and then one for any extra stuff that needs to get done. And then I will use the weekly layout to plan my week out for work. And then I can just use the daily pages as I've been using them in my Plum Paper Daily. And then for the Moxie Life Reflections, I will use this reflection page, but I will answer the Moxie Life questions that are in the reflections. And what I'll probably do is just print one of those pages out and put it in here so that I can keep an eye on it. And that will be how I utilize this over the course of the quarter. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but we will see. Now, before I start setting this up, I will show you here some footage of my Kanban board before I reset it. I did a very decent job this past quarter. I managed to get everything done except for a couple of updates I wanted to make to Discord and to my Patreon. Those are both gonna get moved to this new quarter, which we'll talk about when I start setting up. As for the art-related stuff, art, Etsy shop, freelance, all of that, Again, I completed almost everything. The two big projects that didn't get completed are getting moved. One of them is the print on demand stuff that I want to integrate into my Etsy website. That is getting moved to this next quarter. As for the other one, it was a course that I wanted to get through and I'm going to work on that potentially this quarter, but it's gonna be a little lower on my list, I think. So we'll see how that one goes. And then on my administrative goal, again, I didn't do a great job with the HB90 reflections every week, but I did do some, I did check in with the system every week. So I, I'm counting that. The biggest thing I haven't really gotten done yet that you see on there is I was going to time track for a month and really try to refine my system. That is definitely getting moved to this next quarter as you're gonna see because one of my goals really is going to focus in on some information I need from that. The other thing is still taxes, I'm in the middle of that, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. That's where I'm at with my Kanban. I'm going to clear this all off and set that today as well as getting this planner set. But I'm gonna set the planner up first just to kind of get that through. So let's go to the front here. And what I think I'm going to do, I have this washi tape that I'm trying to use up this month <laughs> as part of my project stash down. So what I think I'm going to do is just, hmm. Do I want to do this? Mm. You know what? I think I'm gonna rephrase how this is gonna go. What I think I will do is tear out this annual goals page. So I don't need all this goal setting space. I have three goals and they're all fairly short. So what I think I'm gonna do is glue these two pages together and then I'm gonna use this, these two vision board pages and this dot grid page, and I'm just gonna use one for each of each page for my goals so that I can make a note of the things, the outcome metrics that I want to uh, focus on. I was worried on this last page that the washi tape wasn't gonna cover up all the text at the top of the page, but it did, and that makes me excited. I love it when a plan comes together. So I'm just grabbing some of these like neutrally gray boxes from my massive Chrissy Ann design stash because I'm using my shit. And I'm gonna put them up here for like goal number one, goal number two, goal number three. Now when I was doing my goal setting on the HB90 pages that I printed out, I actually was using a blue pen. I'm totally a black ink person when it comes to my planner, but the blue pen was a lot of fun for just, you know, I like mixing it up when I'm doing like scribbling. Anyway, where is my pen for Chrissy and Design stickers? While this is drying, let me also mention that part of the reason that I'm interested in like taking the time to adapt this planner is because one of the things I've noticed with my personal Moxie Life planner is that I go in and I work in my goals every single week because I'm already in my planner every single day. And so having the goal stuff with the daily stuff for my work, I think is gonna mean that I will do my reflections more often. I think the biggest issue is um, having the prompts. So part of me is like, maybe I'll just order some stickers for the, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but. The point being is that 
I'm hoping this will work. I am open to it not working and trying something else. But for the for the most part, this is where I'm going to start right now. And I think I'm actually going to use this Scribbles That Matter fine liner because I really was enjoying the fine line tip of my ultra fine point, my permanent pen that I use on my Christian Design stickers. And so I have this out from a recent review that I just filmed. Stay tuned. I figure I'll use this. I know I like these pens. I've reviewed them in the past. Anyway, so my first goal is my content related goal. And what I'm going to be focusing on this month, it, or this quarter is to be refreshing, is to refresh my content with new ideas and refining my continuing ideas so that I can not only make sure all of you who are watching my shit are enjoying it, but that I can also attract and retain new viewers. So um, what I want to do is grow my overall audience by uh, a few different numbers, like good, better, best. So not just like, I want my YouTube to grow this much. I want my Instagram, no, just overall. So the total, if you add all of them together, that's where I would like to grow it. And so that's the thing I'm going to put here is my goal. And then what I will do is I will put down uh, total audience numbers from the start of April, which is tomorrow, the day I'm filming this. And then the goal total number. And do I reach it or not? All right, so I just drew in a couple of non-measured lines. I'll put all of my current numbers here, and then I will put my uh, end of the month numbers here, and then down here is whether or not I achieved my goal. I'll just draw in a couple of check boxes because we love a good check box around here. Easier on this page too because there's a dot grid. The next couple of pages are blank. This will not be quite as seamless. So there's my first goal page. Second goal is my art related goal. And under my art category is my freelance work, my licensing work, my Etsy shop, um, any other art related stuff. And I also include like the courses that I take when it comes to artwork and stuff like that. And teaching workshops, all of those things are under those categories. So my goal for this month is to set myself up for a successful holiday season by prepping all areas of my art business. So in previous times I've done the HB90 setup, I have made this outcome goal a dollar amount outcome goal. But I don't want to focus on money this month because what I really want to do is focus on getting all of the things done so that next quarter I can do a lot of the work surrounding so that the final quarter, the holiday season, I'll be able to hit the ground running. What I have are three, four, one, two, three, four, four major overarching projects that if I complete all of those projects, I will be in a great spot for the holiday season. And so that's what I'm going to do. My metric is going to be, did I complete all of these projects along with everything else that's going on? And I will let you know, that in these areas, among other things, is getting prepped to start basically Fuckery Flowers Series 3. Because I have decided that I am only going to release those during the holidays, once a year. It's a lot of work to make one of those series. So I will put those down. But the big, they're just four big kind of project areas. So I'm going to put them all. I don't know why I drew two boxes here. I only need to cross them off if they're done. Whatever. <laughs> perhaps it would be oh I know what I can do the two up here will be because there's like some courses I want to finish and completing my portfolio both online and a physical version and those are will go in this section because those all have to do with my licensing business and then down here would be planning the fuckery flowers and getting the print on demand site open so that's more of the retail side of things. So that makes more sense. Okay, goal number three. Here's the big the big picture goal for, this has always been like my administrative type goal or like process related goal, whatever. And it's no different this month, but this one is going to be to be more efficient with my time in order to consistently take Fridays and Saturdays off. Now I've also talked about this in my personal goals, um, that in my annual goals, I think, what does it say? Where's it at? Uh, in my fun and recreation goal, one of my like long-term goals is to add Fridays off as I've been taking Saturdays off consistently, but I only take one day off a week and I work, I say a half day on Fridays and 
Sundays, but that doesn't always work out that way. What I would like is to get to a point where I can work full days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, part day on Sundays, and then take Fridays and Saturdays completely off because I need the extra time to recuperate with my physical health as well as take care of adulting shit. Right now, the way it's working is Saturdays are cram packed with adulting shit. I usually sleep in way too late because I'm exhausted from the week because I'm in kidney failure. And there's just so much I have to do in any given week. It's just become really difficult to juggle all of the needs of my household with all the needs of my work. And so working on that to be a point by the end of the quarter to consistently be taking Thursdays or Fridays and Saturdays off will be really important for me. So the way I divided this one up is that this will be April. This will be May and this will be June. And the way I've got it blocked out in my goal paper here is to take one Friday off in April, two Fridays off in May, and all four Fridays off in June. If I can hit all of those, then I will have can, like managed to get that goal. And within this goal is going to be the time tracking to be able to batch my time more effectively. Uh, that's going to be definitely a part of that. And then I will be also adding any administrative tasks that are not related to my goals into that category as well, purely because that one is, has the least amount of post-it notes. <laughs> and now what we're going to do is we're going to bounce into the months and I'm going to just slap down the monthly stickers really quick on the dividers. So now that I've got those in, I'm not going to use the monthly calendar. I wasn't using it in my plum paper, so it's fine. I'm just going to yank this page out. I'm just doing all sorts of pages here. And then what I will do is again, take my washi tape and I'm going to just do this for all of the months because although maybe I shouldn't do it for all of the months in case I decide I want to use this calendar. But at the same time, part of me is like, well, I should just set this up now and be, be done with it. Like just be okay with it being set up. I don't know. I'm just going to do April for right now because I might want to change my washi tape out. I know I'm trying to use this washi tape up, but what if I change, I have so many other washi tapes. I might need to incorporate some of those into my project stash down or whatnot. And so then these will be my goals for the month of April. My like overall, like this is what I'm focusing on this month. Goal one, goal two, goal three. And then the bottom will just be any other administrative tasks that are on my radar for this month. Now I'm not making a list of all of the things that need to get done in the month because that's not necessary. That would just be double work from this to my Kanban board that I will be setting up very soon. But these are so crooked and I don't give a shit. Yes, I do, but I'm gonna just ignore it. I'm not gonna fill this in right now because I will do that after I'm done setting up my Kanban board, but I can add in a couple that I don't even need to think about at this point. For example, in goal number two, we've got Wild U Major Professor because I am the professor this month and so I know that's something I'm gonna be working on this month. And as for other, we've got Pay Q1 Taxes because that is in April. So those are an example of things I know I'm going to be focusing on this month. Now we come to my weekly layout. So this will be for next week. So I'm not going to bother with the reflections. I mean, I guess I could bother with the reflections page, but I generally don't. When I go into the new quarter, I'm like, fuck it. I don't give a shit. I don't know if I'm going to use this as a weekly actions page or not, because I feel like doing the weekly like setup on the next page will be, be my weekly actions. So I wonder if this could just all be part of like a reflections situation. You know, I was my original intention was to do like the weekly actions for the things I wanted to do in the next month. But what if I wanted to do it as like a reflections? There's five questions on the weekly reflection, right? There's what am I most proud of? What challenges did I face? Am I on target to hit my 90 day goals? What deadlines do I have coming up? And what can I do to catch up or continue to succeed. Like I'm just going to do this as like a basic idea here because this, I'm not going to be using this page. If this is my, this could just be my, so this would be like, what am I proud of? And then challenges. And then here will be on target for each goal. One, two, three. And then over here will be deadlines. And then down here will be, um, 
catch up slash succeed. And then over here will be my to-do list for the week. Like just a brain dump for the week. I think that's how I'm going to do this. So this coming up week, I'll just use this for my brain dump. And then the next week I will start adding it. And if you would like me to post a picture of this based on how I use it on Instagram, let me know. But I think that'll be the best way to use it. And then what I'll do is I will use this to plan my week out. And then I will just continue to use my daily pages. And that will be the way that we that we go about it. So that's going to be how I'm using this planner for my work starting uh, next week. So it's technically starting on, oh, what day is it going to be? The fourth question mark, the third or the fourth, something like that. That's when the calendar starts. I go for a Monday start, like the first Monday. And so according to the system, the HB90 system, this quarter will start this coming up Monday. Now that we have got the planner set up for the week, it is time to start working on the Kanban board. Now, I do my Kanban board the same way that I've been doing it. I have three different colors of post-its, one for each area of my goals, and then I fill them out and then I get them all up there for the entire quarter. Now I know some people, that's too many post-its, it's gonna overwhelm you, and so they'll only do it for a month at a time. Other people only put up a few at a time, and how you break your post-its down is, you know, up to you. These are the post-its that I use. They are the World of Color Cape Town Collection. I would love different colors than these, but the post-it note, post-it brand, like the post-it brand post-it notes are the best post-it notes for this particular purpose. This size is the best size for me, and there's just not a lot of color selection out there in this size. I've used up a lot of these like peachy pink ones with content. That tends to be one of my heavier duty goals. So I'm going to go with the hot pink this time around for content. We're going to continue with the teal for the administrative goal and the green for the art goal. For a quick overview of a Kanban board, I have done videos talking about them before. I did not invent this system, but this is how I use it. I have the board divided up into three sections. The top, it's basically divided to three by three. The top row, so each column is a different goal. So we have content, art, and administrative in the three columns. The way that it works going down the, col the rows is the top row is all of the tasks for the quarter. The middle row is everything I'm working on this week. And the bottom row is everything I've already completed. For me, this is really important because seeing the progress is a big motivator for me. Also seeing how much stuff I've crammed into that middle row kind of gives me an idea of if I've overloaded myself for the week or not. Now, how I break down my tasks, I tend to break them down in the way that works best with my workflow. So for example, when it comes to YouTube videos, all I do is I put the date the video is going live. And once that video is scheduled, it is in the completed pile, right? So when I start working on that video, it makes its way to the middle section and then it goes to the bottom section when it is scheduled, not when it gets published because um, sometimes I schedule out in advance. I have a separate project management system. I'm using ClickUp right now. I used to use Notion, but Notion just was a little more maintenance than I wanted. So ClickUp has been my current favorite, but I use ClickUp and in ClickUp, I have each individual video in its various stages of production. But for the Kanban board to manage how much work I'm trying to do in a given week, I just need to know that I need to complete these videos. Because I have the same schedule all the time, two videos during the week and then a live stream or a pre-recorded video on Sunday, I already have all my dates listed out. So I just need to create stacks of them. I group together all my videos, my podcasts. I put them into groups that make sense for me so that I can kind of see sort of where each overall project is going. And with content, it's like, okay, all my YouTube videos are a project. I used up about a pad and a half for this one. This one always tends to be my most posted category, mostly because there's just so many moving parts. For my art, I will keep everything grouped by specific project. I do the same thing with my administrative type goals. So then, Three and a half pads of post-it notes later, I have an updated Kanban board and I am ready for quarter two. I'd love to hear from you in the comments how you manage your projects. Do you use a Kanban system? Do you use project management software or something else? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, friends, peace out.